In case you took a break from the news cycle over the weekend, let me get you up to speed on what took place. Specifically, all of the war crimes that Israel did over just the last couple of days. First of all, they killed nearly 60 Palestinian children, a number that is likely to rise by the time you see this video. On top of that, they destroyed the road leading to Gaza's main hospital. And additionally, they intentionally destroyed a building housing press offices, including the Associated Press, which for those of you who don't know, this is a war crime. Now, the Associated Press reports that it had no indication that Hamas was in the building, and of course, they'd want to verify this, knowing that if Hamas was in the building that their journalists were in, that would make them a target of the Israeli military. So they had no incentive to lie here, and they claimed that they verified, but Israel, they have every incentive to lie here. However, you know, they don't really care what the AP says because they claim that they have irrefutable proof that Hamas was, in fact, in that building, and they supplied the United States government with that proof. Although, for whatever reason, the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, says he has not seen the evidence yet, and he's kind of an important person who they'd want to get this information to immediately. You know, it's almost as if the Israeli government knew what they were doing. They lied to justify their war crime, and they didn't like that news outlets like the Associated Press were reporting on their war crimes. So they bombed them to blatantly silence the media. I mean, they are as brazen as you can possibly be. Now, if you're wondering why the Israeli government is so brazen, well, I'll get to that. I'll tell you why. Spoiler alert, it's because of the United States government. But to top off their weekend of terror attacks against the Palestinian people, they took to Twitter to post rocket emojis. Lots and lots of rocket emojis. Now, they claim that each rocket emoji signifies a rocket fired at the Israeli people by Hamas. However, I wonder how long that thread would be if they had a rocket emoji for all of the airstrikes they dropped on the heads of Palestinian women and children. How long would that thread be if they actually listed all of the civilian casualties and represented said civilian casualties with emojis? Now, here's the thing about uh, what's going on in Gaza and Palestine. We're complicit. Our government supplied Israel with the bombs that they are using on children. And the Biden administration can effectively end all of this almost immediately with a simple phone call. So what is he doing? Well, here's what he's doing instead. As Ellen Mitchell of The Hill reports, the Biden administration has approved $735 million worth of precision-guided weapons to be sold to Israel, a congressional aide confirmed to The Hill on Monday. The sale, which Congress was officially notified of on May 5th, has concerned some House Democrats who have pressed the administration to limit military support for the Israeli government in the face of its growing assault on Gaza. A majority of the possible sale is of Boeing-made joint direct attack munitions, equipment that can can make unguided bombs dropped from aircraft into guided missiles, the aide confirmed. Okay, so let me get this straight. In response to us giving Israel the weapons that they are now using to massacre civilians in Gaza, what does the Biden administration do? They offer them more weapons. Okay, maybe we're being a little bit too uncharitable here. Maybe it's not as bad as it sounds. Maybe this is some twisted attempt at soft diplomacy and Biden is maybe trying to send a message. Hey, if you want more bombs, stop dropping the last bombs that we gave you. I mean, maybe that's the case. Although, believe it or not, that probably isn't the case because the Biden administration isn't attaching any stipulations to the weapons. He basically knows what these weapons will be used for. AP reports the White House says President Joe Biden expressed, quote, support for a ceasefire in a call to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu Monday, the eighth day of Israeli-Palestinian fighting. The Biden administration distanced itself Monday from growing calls by Democrats and others for an immediate ceasefire between Israel and Gaza's Hamas rulers as fighting entered a second week with more than 200 people dead, most of them Palestinians in Gaza. The United States, Israel's top ally, also blocked for the third time what would have been a unanimous statement by the 15-nation UN Security Council expressing grave concern over the intensifying Israeli-Palestinian conflict and the loss of civilian lives. The final U.S. rejection Monday killed the Security Council statement, at least for now. Okay, well, never mind. It literally is as bad as it sounds. Biden is expressing support for a ceasefire. And of course, he was very, very clear in that call. I'm sure that both sides 
are equally culpable here. But um, <laughs> if you thought that that was bad, it's actually an improvement from a worse statement that the White House put out via Twitter over the weekend, which reads, Today, the president spoke with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, reaffirmed his strong support for Israel's right to defend itself against rocket attacks from Hamas and other terrorist groups in Gaza, and condemned these indiscriminate attacks against Israel. So once again, he's echoing the same sentiment he expressed before. Israel has the right to defend itself. They have the right to indiscriminately drop bombs on Gaza, one of the most densely populated areas in the world with 50% children. And uh, it's perfectly fine. It's not a war crime. You know, they can literally bomb buildings, housing journalists, and that's fine. We'll still give them millions of dollars worth of bombs that we know they'll use for war crimes. I mean, imagine if your friend was going to commit an act of murder and you know that this is what he wanted to do and he asked you for a knife and you gave him the knife and then he went and committed the act of murder. Well, you just supplied that murderer with the murder weapon. Therefore, you're partially culpable. You're a co-conspirator. You helped this individual carry out a murder. You aided and abetted this individual. You knew this individual was going to commit an act of murder and you gave him the weapon knowing his intent. That's what's happening here with Joe Biden. So this isn't just a defense of Israel. This isn't just him greenlighting the war crimes that Israel is carrying out in Gaza. This is Joe Biden being culpable, being a co-conspirator here. So Benjamin Netanyahu is a war criminal, and he should be in prison for the rest of his life for the crimes against humanity that he's carrying out right now. And guess what? Joe Biden should join him because what he's doing is he's giving Benjamin Netanyahu a psychopath, the weapons that he's using to slaughter innocent civilians. And that can't stand for a president who ran on decency and restoring the soul of America. He's proving that America never had a soul if we enable atrocities like this and we won't even allow the UN Security Council to express concern about Israel's war crimes. I mean, it's it's stunningly disgusting, but this is the status quo that Joe Biden is continuing to carry out. But unfortunately for these war criminals, the tide is beginning to turn, and more and more people, including American news agencies, are waking up to the reality of the situation, that Israel is the occupier and the aggressor, and there's no both sides to this. I mean, we saw how AP in that article was still both sidesing this, they say Israel-Palestinian fighting after Israel literally bombed their news outlet. But the tide slowly but surely is turning. Things are changing. And those individuals who are defending Israel's war crimes very quickly will find themselves on the wrong side of history. As the people who defended South African apartheid are now finding themselves on the wrong side of history.